Oh, one more thing that's interesting about chaparral, uh, and actually let's just talk about identification one more time. It does get little yellow flowers in the spring, and then in, uh, as the summer goes on, those little yellow flowers turn into these little puff balls. There's one right here, so you can see that. <laughs> because it's fall and it, the plant, here's another one right here. Let's see if I can find it. There we go, see that little puff ball? That used to be a yellow flower. Hi YouTube friends, I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. And today we're going to talk about a really a special plant, a plant that is near and dear to my heart and that I have loved since I was a little girl. <laughs> it's actually a plant that doesn't grow up here in uh, North Central Idaho or really anywhere near here. And, mm, but it does grow down in the Mojave Desert and the Sonoran Desert and uh, it, down into Mexico. And this is Chaparral, all right? This is Laria tridentata is the Latin name. And today we're going to learn about the benefits and uses of Chaparral, the contraindications of it and some other uh, fun facts. And we're going to make some Chaparral oil. I'm also going to talk with you about the tincture. So Chaparral, what is known as a, it's a desert plant. It's allelopathic. And what that means is that this plant actually kills off its offspring <laughs> to an extent. I'm, I'm being a little facetious with that, but the roots of Chaparral actually put out a chemical in the soil that kills off other young Chaparral plants. And that actually maintains the ecosystem in the desert which is pretty interesting, uh, I think. And uh, so when, and what's fascinating is if you go out to the, at least the Mojave where I lived and you look at, especially from the air, I was in a helicopter one time flying over, the plants, the chaparral plants are spaced out about five to six, seven feet from each other, mature plants. And uh, it's just so very, very interesting to me what nature, uh, is able to do and what God does with the plants and making sure that the ecosystem stays healthy. Chaparral is a plant that can grow yay high, okay, <laughs> six, seven feet tall in very healthy areas. Uh, in the Mojave Desert where I was in Southern Nevada, near Las Vegas, Nevada, up near the mountains, they didn't get any higher than about four-ish feet tall and then if you go out to buy Lake Mead uh, during the spring times you can see some taller plants out there so they range they vary in size the leaves are small and uh, green and rather waxy there's a resinous substance on that so that's going to affect how you're going to choose to tincture your plant and uh, in the springtime this chaparral is covered with beautiful beautiful yellow flowers that turn into little puff balls as the summer goes on and when it rains in the desert, there is just nothing better than the beautiful, beautiful chaparral uh, in, the, in the rainy times. It makes the whole desert just smell so fresh and clean and beautiful. And that's what I'm smelling right now. And you might be wondering where I got this chaparral. <laughs> Actually, one of my students uh, lives on the border of Mexico and Texas, and she was kind enough to send this uh, to me, a big box of this beautiful chaparral. And I have articles on my website, healingharvesthomestead.com, where I talk about foraging chaparral, and you can see pictures of me foraging it. Also a recipe for how to make a chaparral salve. But today, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the plant itself in terms of internal use and topical use, and uh, then go ahead and get some oil started. We're gonna turn all this into oil today, infused chaparral oil. So chaparral is a bit of a controversial plant, to be honest. Uh, it's a low dose herb is what I consider as an herbalist, a holistic herbalist. This a low dose herb is one that you just should not use, <laughs> basically, if there are better alternatives or use sparingly, very, very sparingly. It is considered a toxic plant by the FDA, although it is still allowed to be uh, purchased here in the US. It's banned in, other, in some other countries like Canada. They don't allow the sale of chaparral because uh, there are some problems with toxicity and we'll talk about that. So first of all, let's go into internal use first. So internal use, you do 
need to be a lot more careful with the chaparral because you know when you take something internally it affects your body organs including your liver and your liver must uh, you know filter things out so there's a chemical in chaparral that's highly antioxidant it's believed by scientists to be an anti-cancer agent it's ndga is the um, initials that by how it goes but it's very it comes in very high amounts in chaparral and that chemical is also what causes it to be hepatotoxic which means that it's dangerous for the liver in large amounts unfortunately there are well, or maybe fortunately, <laughs> there have been no uh, human studies done with chaparral that I'm aware of at this time. And there have been quite a few animal studies and they have found that chaparral does have, does seem to have some anti-tumor effects and it can actually shrink tumors in um, m mice and rat studies. So there's that. And there, it, there's actually tons of ailments that chaparral is often used for. We're, we'll talk about those in just a moment, but I do want to mention the contraindications. These are people who should never, ever, ever, ever use chaparral. So number one is anybody who's got liver or kidney problems with their body or you know conditions should not use chaparral at all. Just stay away from it. It's not worth it. If you are pregnant or nursing, you should also not use chaparral. If you have autoimmune issues, then you should probably stay away from chaparral as well because the NDGA chemical that's in it actually can uh, stimulate the immune system as well. If you are pregnant or nursing, you also should not take chaparral, obviously for obvious reasons, and I would not use chaparral with children either. <laughs> so it's kind of got a long list of safety factors. I personally prefer using it for topical use, although I do have the tincture here, and I've got about a half a gallon of the tincture. I rarely use it, but once in a while, if I need it, it's there, especially as a liniment for topical use. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the benefits of internal use, and then we'll move into the topical use. Um, area. So we just talked about the fact that chaparral may be very beneficial um, as a, a, a cancer helper, okay, or to shrink tumors. It's also a very nice antiviral plant. It's got antiviral capabilities for a number of different viruses, including the HPV, human papillomavirus, uh, HIV, and also HSV, or the herpes simplex virus. And so this is one of those plants where internal use can be helpful for these uh, kinds of situations. But again, if there's another herb that you can take instead, go there. It is also very anti-inflammatory and can be helpful for systemic inflammation and uh, might be helpful internally for arthritis, sciatica, and things of that nature. Although once again, I do believe there are better options to try first like turmeric and black pepper or other anti-inflammatories. All right, let's move on to topical use now. One of the things I love to do is make the chaparral into an infused oil for skin care. It's really helpful for skin infections, including uh, impetigo. It's nice in a mouthwash. In fact, the tincture can be um, added to my mouthwash recipe, which I can link to above, where you're not swallowing it, you're just rinsing really well, because it's really helpful for those kinds of infections of tissue that it comes into contact with. Uh, thrush, it would be probably very helpful in cases of thrush as well, but don't use it with babies. <laughs> This would be for adults. It's wonderful for pains due to inflammation, like sore muscles. It's helpful for arthritis pain, and it's also a nice healing general wound. A topical oil or salve or liniment or spray. You can make it a number of different ways. Also, I want to mention here, if you have any hunters in your family who hunt down in the pinion juniper belts or near those areas, chaparral can be a very nice scent masking spray. <laughs> you can make up the tincture, put it into a spray bottle and use that to spritz your clothes. Be careful of staining. It, it is uh, rather dark. Uh, tincture, so you might want to do a little patch test. It can it can cover scent very very nicely because the scent is so very powerful. And I'll tell you, I the the chaparral arrived in a box and was tightly packed. So thank you to my student for that. And I've had it spread out on my uh, work table here for the past couple of days. 
and I've just been loving walking by it and smelling it, but it's to the point now where I must get it into a jar. So <laughs> we are going to start working on that right now. So for the oil, you're just going to pack the leaves in. There's really, it, this is such a healthy plant right here. The leaves are uh, very thick on the stems, so I'm not even going to worry about removing them from the stems. I'm just gonna push those down in there really well. And oh, as I'm crushing them, it just smells so good. So, so, so good. It's beautiful. I want to mention too, I don't like to keep talking about cancer. We're kind of not supposed to talk about that. The C word, the other C word, right? I know people who use the shot. Uh, I know people who use the chaparral salve to help with different uh, skin types of issues, and I'll just leave it at that uh, as well. Um, I'm gonna run out of oil here. I'm actually running out of oil, so it is time to go replenish my oil supplies, which I will do this afternoon. Um, an herbalist can't get by without her oil, <laughs> right? I want to talk about just really quick one other thing as I pour the last of this oil into this jar and then I'm going to pack the other jar with this over here. I heard, I was listening to a video uh, that was an interview with Yero Willard, who's an herbalist of very high repute uh, here on YouTube and evidently he's up in Canada and the Canadian government is planning to make quite a few herbs and just herbs in general, they have to meet certain guidelines in order to be sold. To me, this is very, very dangerous. What this means for people is, is that their, the choices for their health care are going to be reduced and they're not going to be able to purchase as easily um, the products that they need. And then small businesses, herbalists, are probably going to have a really hard time selling things. So again, you guys, I, I talk about this a lot with my students. I should probably talk about this more on YouTube here, but I don't like the fear mongering, but I think we're past the, the stage where we can just get away without talking about this. The fact of the matter is, is that our choices are being removed from us, unbeknownst to most people. Most people aren't aware of herbalism and how wonderful and helpful it can be as a health or as a health um, alternative health modality for many of us. Um, it's all we use in our family is herbs and that's because we have the knowledge too. The time to start learning herbalism for yourselves is right now. I cannot emphasize that enough because at some point I have a feeling that it's coming down the pike now where it's going to be harder and harder to get our herbs if we start learning how to uh, to use what we have available at our finger top tips like this beautiful chaparral or the St. John's wort that we harvested and sent out to students last week. You know, we are going to be able to take care of ourselves and make sure that we have our health choices because as it stands, for those people who are, are only aware of Big Pharma, you know how it is. It's like, go to the doctor for everything, take a pill for everything, take another pill for the side effects, and then another pill for those side effects, and it's a trap. And, it's, um, and I get very passionate about this because I had a lot of health problems earlier in my life that I was able to completely handle and now handle only using herbs and essential oils that I forage and grow and once in a while have to buy or barter with like this. And when you know how to, to do that, when you figure out how to use the plants at your disposal, you are so empowered and so is your family. I'm gonna stop there because this is something I could literally rant and rave about forever and I'm not going to do that, but be aware of what's going on out there. Start learning now, start learning now. Because guess what? They can't take your knowledge away from you. <laughs> they might be able to reduce the number of, or take away the number of medicinal herbs that I can go purchase, but they can't take my knowledge away. They can't take my knowledge of what to do with this plant away. They can't take away what to do with the goldenrod or the golden seal or the Oregon grapefruit or the yarrow out there um, or the elderberry or anything else. They cannot take that knowledge away from me. I have it intact in my head and also in my many, many books and in my courses. So I hope you'll join us for a course 
Healing Harvest Homestead, uh, and the School of Botanical Arts and Sciences. I do have a wonderful herbal membership. I would love to invite you to join. Uh, it's a great way to learn herbs and community. Tons of material and content in it as well. All right, I'm passionate about getting an herbalist into every extended family. I think that's something we all need desperately at this point in time in our history. So join me, HealingHarvestHomestead.com. I hope you'll subscribe, like, and share this video. I hope you enjoyed this bit of information on Laria trinitata, otherwise known as chaparral or creosote bush, and or sometimes greasewood in some places. But uh, it's a great plant and it's very, very nice to have in your arsenal. By the way, I will have chaparral infused oil for sale in my shop pretty soon. It takes about a couple months for it to process and then it will be there. So be watching my shop. My shop is called Grace Garden Apothecary. All right, I'm Heidi B. I guess it's so good having you here and I hope you'll join me in some future videos. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you, YouTube friends. Bye-bye.